Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> seconds someone commits suicide. One in four adults have experienced serious mental illness. One in six children have experienced serious mental illness. Untreated and stigmatized, mental illnesses are a serious cause for concern. That being said, the solution sounds simple. Diagnose, treat, and nurture those who struggle with mental health issues. Well, mental illness in news and entertainment is consistently portrayed in a distorted and negative manner that paints those who struggle with it as dangerous or criminal. The effects that these connotations have on real people is astronomical. Being exposed to such negative media, people are less likely to seek help and suffer from severe blows to self-image and worth that further the notion that they are beyond help or outcast for their suffering. For example, if you've been told your whole life that seeing in color makes you a bad person, would you mention to people that you could see color? Most likely not. Same goes for mental health. Even if the topic doesn't surface often, so much as hearing a snide comment about going to therapy from a family member or even a TV show can significantly, significantly impact a person's openness on the topic. The media isn't entirely bad, though, as it can be used for good. Many young people who feel alienated turn to the internet communities as a refuge where they can find people that have the same interests or hardships as them. As the majority of our information comes from the television, news sites, social media, or other online platforms, those are the most important spaces for dismantling any stigma or prejudice that some may have against those with mental health issues. Educating the public to perceive mental illnesses as no different than any other bodily abnormality will help destigmatize the seeking help for it and lower the rates of suicide as a result. Feeling alone in your struggle is one of the most crushing experiences someone could go through. And there's millions of children who are experiencing that today. And I want to change that. First of all, what really is mental illness? Well. The American Psychiatric Association defines it as health conditions involving changes in emotion, thinking, or behavior that are associated with distress and or problems functioning in school, social work, or family activities. Mental illnesses can be the result of a number of incidents, including childhood trauma, hormonal imbalances, genetic predisposition, or even damage to the brain. Other factors that can impact the... can play a key role in their susceptibility to mental illness falls under the social umbrella. That is how they fit in with the people around them. If a person, especially a young person, is consistently discriminated against or even left out, it can seriously damage their mental health, as you can imagine. Youngsters are designed to be social, and when they are withheld from being able to tap into that side of themselves, it greatly damages their self-worth and any confidence they might have had. And it might even lead to bigger issues down the road. I can speak from experience on this topic. In elementary school, a long time ago, I know, <laughs> I didn't consider myself to be popular, if you can even be popular in fourth grade. In fact, I remember feeling left out when trying to interact with the popular kids. After that, although it was a seemingly insignificant experience, I had difficulty opening up to people. I didn't want to start conversations with anyone. I hated hanging out in groups because I had a horrible feeling that I would be left out. So I avoid avoided big group activities for a long time. Even when I was comfortable with the people I hung out with, out of nowhere I'd start to feel sick and beg my mom to come pick me up. Ordering at a drive-thru was also a big deal. I'd get shaky and have a hard time breathing, and my confidence was desperately low. And until recently, that's just how things were for me. I didn't know how to tell anyone that talking to people made me physically ill, or thinking about confrontation pr practically gave me stomach ulcers. So I dealt with it. But if little elementary or middle school me had tons of support and education on mental health, even just at school, maybe I still wouldn't be struggling with social anxiety today. Maybe if I had the opportunity to talk with a therapist back then, I would have gotten better at communicating my anxiety, or even just verbalizing what's going on in my head. Talk therapy is an amazing tool that I think could be beneficial for everyone. 
It's having a dedicated outlet, who happens to be a licensed listener, to help you understand what you're feeling and give you different perspectives on how the stressors in your life are able to be lessened. Young students have a large load to deal with, and a good chunk of the time, the way they go, the, the way they go about it isn't healthy. Now, some of you may remember being in middle or high school, but if not, let me catch you up. First of all, I don't think anyone needs research to be able to say with confidence that being in middle school was one of the worst things about growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of acne and body hair and rampant hormones making your every thought one of dire importance. You're constantly thinking about how others perceive you, so you join social media. And then you feel like a black sheep for having hard times or feeling depressed when all your friends are posting the cool stuff they're up to and nothing else about the stress or hardships. Eventually, though, you realize that only the good's posted online, and it's highly romanticized anyways. You're constantly thinking about juggling schoolwork and social life, and you wanting to live vicariously, but you have to be home by 7 and finish your history notes, and can't drive or do anything without parental consent. Now that I've kind of painted a picture for you, it shouldn't come as a surprise when I say that 50% of mental illnesses develop by age 14. Let me say that again. 50% of mental illnesses develop by age 14. That's a middle schooler. Having available resources during that time of high stress and low yield is especially important for their developing brains, for our developing brains, and already fragile ego. Incorporating more lessons on mental health in primary school increases students' probability of dealing with mental illness in a healthy way. Obviously, the education system plays a major role in children's development as they spend the majority of their time at school. It only makes sense that the environment should be focused not only on students' academic success, but also their well-being. Having competent and educated counselors and in-house therapists, unbiased and earnest lessons on mental illness, and even a hotline for students struggling with suicidal thoughts or anxiety are just a few ways to ensure the safety and health of students. Staying away from important, although maybe uncomfortable topics such as these doesn't get us anywhere. In fact, it harms people. One way to lessen the anxiety of coming to terms with mental health issues is normalizing their occurrence, having more education on possible symptoms, how to take action against said symptoms, and recognizing that having them is nothing, nothing is wrong with having them. Including more in-depth education on mental health in schools has proven to help students better their attitude towards getting help. Because while studies show that recognizing the onset of mental illnesses is crucial in preventing their further development, it is useless if the afflicted one has no one to help recognize the patterns for them, or two, feels too ashamed of their symptoms to speak up and receive help. Let's say for just a moment that mental health issues have never been stigmatized or viewed in a negative way. Cool. There's still a pretty good chance that people will be hesitant to talk about what they're struggling with. Why? Well, maybe one time when they were about to open up to someone, they got totally shut down. Hit with a, I don't have time for this kind of reply. Then later when someone asks, hey, how are you doing? It doesn't feel sincere. They brush off the question and hide their emotions. It becomes a learned behavior of sorts. Becoming convinced that they're taking up too much emotional space and that no one has time for them or even truly cares about how they're really doing. So make it a point to let the people around you know that you do care, that you want to listen and help. Because even one person makes all the difference, even if it is a hard thing to bring up. This is especially true in churches. For example, Pastor Jared Wilson of Harvest Christian Fellowship was a dedicated father and a devout Christian who suffered from severe depression. And from where what we were able to gather, he was a good person. In 2019, he committed suicide. He talked frequently on the topic of mental health and was a strong advocate for the dismantling of the stigma around mental illnesses. Quote, too many Christians believe that mental illnesses can be cured by prayer and Bible study alone. <coughs> Depression is a disease, not a result of inadequate faith. For some people, being mentally ill in the church is a difficulty. As typically unseen illnesses, the reason behind mental issues is frequently attributed to lack of faith or a sinful lifestyle or even the work of demons. Because of this, trying to reach out for help in the church can do more harm than good for some people. Now, I'm not saying that every church performs exorcisms on their mentally ill, but, I'm simply, but simply being more supportive of those who seek professional help is something that, we sh that is something that would dramatically better the outlook for struggling members. It's as easy as recognizing that going in for therapy is no different than getting an x-ray or running blood work. It's a medical professional working to diagnose a patient's infirmity, whether it's mental or physical. Now, prayer and being in the Word of God is healthy for a Christian anyways, but would you simply pray that your son's broken arm sets itself instead of taking him to the ER? I hope not. But there's nothing wrong with taking advantage of the medical knowledge we have today. After all, it's there for a reason. Okay, 
Now that I've talked for what seems like forever on the impact that basically everything has on mental health, what should we do? We should start by being sensitive, being caring enough towards friends and family or students to reach out when they begin acting differently. Have deeper conversations, have meaningful conversations. Learn to recognize unhealthy behaviors and help others to see them too. Ask your friends if they've been getting enough sleep. Ask your students if they're doing okay at home. Offer companionship to someone sitting by themselves. Make them feel wanted and comfortable in their vulnerability. Just listen to what people have to say. Changing the way that mental illness is perceived won't happen overnight, but changing your actions can. Now, how do we do that? Well, the easiest way? Love. In all that you do, let it be done in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. You'll soon realize that it's a lot easier, it's a lot harder to upset or drive people away if you only act with love. Love is kind and patient and understanding and a plethora of other things, but above all, it's the one thing that we can't ever get enough of in this world. Thank you. So much to that talk. I mean, I almost apologize for the 10 words or less. That's good. Really it's okay. Um, what, what did you come up with? I came up with comfort zones are meant to be challenged. So mm. I kind of attributed that to my speech, but also taking this class in general. I talk about this all the time, but I wasn't going to take this class because speak, public speaking made me really uncomfortable, as a lot of people feel, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. And so I wasn't going to, but I ended up taking it anyways, and I'm glad that I challenged my comfort zone because now I feel like I've improved so much and I'm a lot more confident when I'm speaking. But also with this um, comfort zones and social interactions, not wanting to bring up touchy topics is something that I feel like we should challenge. We should bring up how people are doing emotionally or mentally. Well, let me tell you, after years of watching <laughs> you give reports in front, you you really done a great job. Thank you. And, um, you make uh, make me think of Piper too, the in group, out group kind of thing. And I reflected back on a professor at UCLA mm -hmm. forty years ago, doc, the late Dr. Palmer, and he talked about some of, touched on some of the points that you did. You're much you're certainly current in all the issues, but the one thing that he talked about was this fear addressing the issue, mm -hmm. and then being so quick to label people. Um, I can only imagine, maybe you could just help, help me, I'm a non-tech guy, sorry, Justin, <laughs> but uh, the whole reality of how much of a threat is social media and technology mm -hmm. to exacerbating this problem? Mm -hmm. Well, there's pros and cons to everything, obviously. Sure. So like I mentioned, there's a lot of online platforms where people who feel estranged in their real life interactions can find people that they relate to online and that's where a lot of strong friendships are made, I've found. Um, but also like the negative side of things. You see celebrities and all your friends doing cool stuff or like you struggle with body image issues or not feeling like you have an interesting life. I feel like that really impacts people, especially young girls, <laughs> I've found. Mm -hmm. but, um, so yeah, there's pros and cons to everything, but like I mentioned as well, um, just bringing up social, or not social, mental health issues, I feel like, and just being more aware uh, online, as there's a lot of influencers that have the ability to affect the people that see their content, I feel like that would be helpful. <laughs> That's good. So I was thinking, mm -hmm. this is really good. <laughs> oh, no. It's really good, I like your... What you said at the end too, the, you know, it's all the answer is that we just do everything in love. And that is the answer in like community. So for like the trending, you know, the bad, you know, the suicide and mm -hmm. the 50% the by age 14, you know, that's very relevant to us here at our school mm -hmm. and at every school. But it's, as a Christian school, we have these uh, opportunities to, to build community and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking like what are, and, and we know it's all love, so that's like a really generic answer on yeah. how to help, help, and you gave a lot of, you know, be sensitive and stuff like that, but can you think of ways that like our community, in-person community here mm -hmm. could help to answer the, the problems and even like counter effect, counteract the negative parts of, you know, the technology and stuff, mm -hmm. but, al but also to use it, you know, I don't know, just like more practical things for our actual school and in-person community. As far as like recognizing signs of mental illness, or yeah, like, just destigmatizing it. Yeah, and even prevention instead of just mm -hmm. treatment and all that kind. Of, I mean, you're, you gave those orders in general, but do you think in mm -hmm. like in our school, how could we apply them? Do you have any ideas specifically? Um, 
Um, we were kind of talking this, about this a little bit as far as like elementary school goes. Um, just like one-on-one -on -one time with teachers, I feel like is a really good opportunity, especially for the younger students. Like they look up to teachers a whole lot, and especially if their home life isn't that good, having a strong Christian adult figure in their life that is there for them emotionally, I think just would be very beneficial. But as far as like the older students, I think um, I just this came to me like right now. But like with the groups, having the opportunity to talk about stuff like that in like your own age group and realizing that everybody gets stressed out, everyone gets depressed, and everyone feels anxious sometimes, like, I feel like that would bring a lot of awareness and that would just help people to feel more normal about yeah. not being okay sometimes. Yeah. It's cool, yeah, just honesty mm -hmm. and openness. And that's good. So. That was my question. But, um, <laughs> thank you, Michaela, so much. And you had talked before, I heard you guys talking, about <laughs> you, the older girls, or um, interact with the elementary mm -hmm. students and how that really is important to, to mm -hmm. thank you for that. Of course. <laughs> Any other questions?